I'm going to take that and I'm going to squash it. <coughs> so I'm going to make this. It's supposed to be constant area. We can do it away with. You can see that, or should I make it a different color? Maybe I got a better red one here. Bring this one better. The new links. This one, uh, that one is the, <coughs> we're going to call little delta x, and this dimension can be little delta y. Now notice this is homogeneous distortion, so I started with straight lines, ended up with straight lines, so this is a straight line. Now mind you, I made it simpler, right? The general problem could have been started with this and end up with this for every point in the space, whatever, right? But I don't want to deal with those other things. I just want to look at this local distortion. So I've gotten rid of any rotation or translation. It's already taken out in this hypothetical problem. Now, I don't want to screw up. Uh, after deformation, there are link changes. So, delta u in the x direction equals little delta x minus big delta x. Or alternatively speaking, we can think about that for a moment. That right there is little delta u in the x direction. That's the displacement of this quantity in that direction. And similarly, there's another quantity here, little delta u y, where little delta u y equals little delta y minus big delta. So the displacement in the x direction is the final position minus position for the displacement in the y direction is the final position minus initial position. The gradient in the displacement here, these are components, right, in a direction. You could think of as v u v x. calculus class, which you defined as the limit as delta x goes to zero of the quantity little delta u in the x direction uh, big delta x. What's that plus sign? Is that a d again? Hmm? Little delta. Where, where? Well, that's a partial derivative sign. I don't, I don't derivative. Derivative sign okay. It does not need to be a partial derivative just to worry about it. You just need it to be a GU. Yeah. yeah. Or was it big X? Big X. Does make a difference. This quantity then is equal to delta, little delta X minus big delta x divided by big delta x, the limit of that, right? Does this quantity sound familiar or something you might have heard? Final length minus initial length divided mm -hmm. by initial length. That is a quantity called the elongation frame. 
so-called E-tags in this particular context. So an elongation strain in the X direction, or sometimes called delta L over L. Final length minus initial length over initial length. Yes, ma'am. The limit, yeah, the limit of delta, little delta u of the x direction divided by big delta x. And this one, yes, this is a limit also of delta x. I just substituted that expression back into that. Like on little x, um, little x minus Yes, little delta, big delta. It goes back to physical dimensions, right? That's all it is, right? Make sense? So that's all strain energy. Well, one part strain energy, but strain energy. Similarly, you could do the same thing. There's also a du dy. I won't go through all the same thing. So there's an e in the y direction, which is little delta y minus big delta y divided by big delta x. So that goes to zero. That's the other quantity, the other elongation. In this quantity, in this problem, the way it's set up, right? Now, that's one measure of the elongation strain. You could also define another quantity. Uh, let me do it over here. You can also define a quantity called the stretch. For bringing it into it, for the, if you're doing the uh, L1, you still use big delta x to the same? Say that again? Or do you have? Yes, the same. So you're still using delta x to the? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. Yes, sorry. Now, I could claim with my bad handwriting, but it's true. 